Richard, the issue of the beginning of the universe is extremely important in modern physics and cosmology. Part of the motivation of some is because they are concerned that religious people, theologians, would take a beginning of the universe as an inference for the existence of God. So, how important is it theologically for the existence of the God whose uh, uh, arguments you believe point to is a beginning of the universe? I don't think it's very important at all. Uh, the arguments to the existence of God are an arguments to a God who sustains the universe in being. For example, just to take the, the argument from the uniformity of nature, every particle in the universe obeys the law of gravity. But to, to say that is just to say that every particle attracts every other particle with a force proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the distance of their spin. Uh, their distance apart. And that is a very remarkable coincidence uh, which happens now and happen has happened as long as there's been a universe, as far as we can tell. Um, and this needs explaining whether it's been going on forever or whether it started. Because if it's been going, going on forever, let's take an analogy. Suppose you come into a room and you see a lot of people who are or people or people like things who are all dancing in uh, with the same movements. They're all keeping perfect, uh, uh, perfect tune, perfect uh, dance uh, in exactly the same uh, uh, steps as each other. And you say, "How is it that they are all keeping pace with each other?" And the you are told, oh, well, they always have been keeping pace with each other, and that explains why they're keeping pace with each other. And, of course, it doesn't, because what one would want to know is why have they all... <laughs> it doesn't explain a coincidence to say there's always been a coincidence. Uh, and what would explain it is if you found that there were some invisible strings which were pulling uh, the uh, dancers in such a way and that, that there was a puppet master in the roof who were pulling these strings... And then, even if this had been going on forever, it would have explained why it had been going on forever, viz. he had been pulling these strings forever. That is to say, you would explain the coincidence by the continuing action of the puppet master, but you don't explain the coincidence by saying it's always been like that. So the very regularity of the universe demands an explanation whether it's got a beginning or not. Um, and uh, so I don't think it makes any difference to the strength of arguments for the existence of God. And St. Thomas Aquinas, who is best known for producing arguments for the existence of God, he also thought it didn't make any difference, uh, that the same problems arise uh, requiring God as the explanation, whether or not the universe had a beginning or not. He, of course, thought he did have a beginning because he thought that was the right way to interpret the book of Genesis, but he didn't think it made any arguments, a difference to the strength of arguments. It doesn't even increase the strength of the argument? Well, if, there is, if there is an actual beginning to, to space-time. I, I, I'm not certain about that. I, I don't think it does, actually, because um, one could out... Uh, I know people do feel that, uh, but I think they only feel that because they don't feel the strength of the argument from the uniformity <laughs> of nature. But if they did feel the strength of the uniformity of nature, they would realize there's such a big problem, whether it started off uh, with a coincidence or whether it's always been go going on with a coincidence, that uh, the fact that it started off wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't mm. make very much <laughs> difference. Uh, uh, and indeed, one could argue the other way around, actually, because um, uh, suppose it did start off with a Big Bang, um, and suppose the Big Bang uh, started off from something that took up virtually no space at all, but it had built into it all the propensities of all the particles which would subsequently emerge, then you might explain the law of gravity by saying, well, it was built into... Um, 
uh, the particles which formed the Big Bang, that they would only produce particles which themselves would be governed by, the, by gravity. But if the universe has been going on forever, then you can't explain the coincidence in terms of powers built into a single physical object to start with, because there never was a stage where there was a single physical object. So as it were, one way of explaining the coincidence, which I don't think is a very good way, but one way of explaining the coincidence of uh, the, uh, the behavior of different things would be ruled out if you suppose there have always been behaving, <laughs> behaving in that way. So I don't so, think it makes so a difference. Let's look at the Big Bang and let's look at uh, space-time, which uh, uh, physicists say began at the beginning yes. of the Big Bang. Some s physicists now are beginning to say that time itself is not real or is an illusion of human construct and that it's not fundamental in the laws of physics. So you, you have a, a perspective beginning of the universe. You have some people saying there's no real boundary to the universe in time. Others say time doesn't exist. How do you deal with all these issues regarding time? Uh, you mentioned a number of issues which need to, uh, all of which need to be clarified. The suggestion that time is not real seems to me crazy because the only evidence for any scientific theory is that first people do something and then something happens. And if, as it were, time's not real, then in a sense, uh, this has always been happening or happening. Uh, uh, there's no difference between the events because there's no reality in this happening now and that happening that. And so there would be no difference between first this and then that, and or first that and then this. But if that was the case, all the things that scientists are purported to have discovered, they, they wouldn't have evidence for because um, the, the evidence for the law of gravity uh, in, in primitive form would be first you've got a stone and then you let it go and then it fell, fell to the ground. But if it's being on the ground really occurs in a sense at the same timeless moment as it being here, then uh, you've no evidence for the, for the law of gravity uh, because the evidence is that it takes a certain number of seconds to fall to the ground. And if there aren't really any seconds, then <laughs> you haven't got any evidence for it. I've no objection to the notion that space began uh, with the Big Bang, if there was a Big Bang. But I, I do object to the notion that time began because I don't think you can understand the notion of the universe beginning except in terms of first there was an empty time and then there was a universe. Now, uh, you might think that you could understand the notion of the universe beginning by it having only a finite age. That is to say, uh, if it began 14 uh, billion years ago, then uh, to say that the universe had a beginning would be, on some scientist's account, to say that uh, it has only existed for 14 billion years. Uh, but that account of what it is for the universe to begin will only work if there is a, u a cosmic time scale. That is to say, if there is a universal time scale by which all events which happen can be measured. And there will only be that universal time scale if there are the same laws of nature that apply everywhere and a system of clocks can be set up to measure it. But suppose, for example, suppose uh, that, um, bef uh, that in fact the, the, uh, uh, before the Big Bang there was a period of total chaos when things didn't behave in any regular way. Um, but it seems to make sense to suppose that the universe could have had a beginning even if before the Big Bang there was a period of chaos. It might have began at the beginning of that period of chaos. But then what would it mean to say that it began at the beginning of that period of chaos? Because you couldn't measure the length of that period of chaos. There wouldn't be any difference between that period of chaos lasting a finite number of years and lasting an infinite number of years because there's no scale in which it can be measured. There would still be succession of events, that is to say a topology uh, of First this and that happened in the period of chaos and then there was a big bang and then things went on as we know. But there wouldn't be any metric governing things in the period of chaos. There wouldn't be any truth that that period had lasted a billion years or 
20 billion years or an infinite number of years. Now, this is a conceivable situation, but in that case, you cannot say that to say the universe began is merely to say that it has existed for a finite number of periods of time of equal length, because uh, the universe could have began, as in that scenario, when that is not true. The universe has uh, lasted uh, for longer than uh, a period, uh, longer than a finite number of years, but we can't say how much longer. Not merely we can't say, but there wouldn't be a truth about how much longer. So what does it mean to say that in that situation the universe had began? Well, the only sense that can be given to it is first there was empty time, then there was the period of chaos, then there was our finite, uh, um, the sequence from the Big Bang up till now. So what I'm drawing your attention to is that the notion of the universe having only lasted a finite number of years is only a notion that will apply to the universe if, uh, of a certain sort, is one governed by a cosmic time scale. And you may say, well, it's not possible that the universe could be chaotic. No, but it is possible that there, there may be different equally plausible ways of measuring time, one of which would give a finite age to the universe and one of which would give an infinite age to the universe. For example, the physicist E.A. Milne in the last century uh, postulated that um, uh, the, uh, the law of gravity and the law of electromagnetism gave different time scales. Each of them suggested a different time scale for the universe, and one would one, what would be a finite period on one scale would be an infinite period on the other scale. And, if what you're saying yeah. is true about time, that time did not begin at the Big That's Bang right. the way uh, space-time seems to indicate that it does, but if that were not true, what are the implications of that regarding the structure of reality, the universe, God? Yes. Well, uh, um, my point, uh, the point was that um, we must uh, conceive of uh, uh, the universe as existing within time uh, and um, uh, distinguish between topological and metrical time and there's always topological time. This happens, then that happens, then that happens, then that happens. There's only metric time at those, in those periods of time and in those places in which the things behave in such a regular way that there is a way of measuring that time. And given that, uh, if the universe began, uh, then there was a period of empty time before it. But God is everlasting. He exists at each moment of time. Consequently, uh, before the beginning of the universe, there was just God and just God's having thoughts and whatever, uh, and beliefs and so on. And if there was no change in his beliefs or thoughts, then there would be no truth about whether that period was of infinite, uh, endless or whether it, it was a very short period. It would just be a period. And that is the truth about what God would be like uh, before creating a physical universe.